Pirates of the Mink, where we watch made-for-TV movies and miniseries so you don't have to. From Gia to Xenon, Hysteria to Sybil, welcome to Movies of the Mink. Yeah, Fred 2, Night of the Living Fred. Um, <laughs> oh my god, we can talk about the title later, but uh, yeah, it's it's just our boy Fred, he's back again, um, and he's like, you know, he's trying to expose his new music teacher, because he thinks he's a vampire, and that he's also brainwashing the entire school, and that's, that's kind of it, really. <laughs> I, 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 one one of the things that I found fascinating is that, like, you know, this movie is rolling along, and I'm like, is this structured better or worse than the last one? <laughs> and 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 so it's like rolling along, and all of a sudden I'm like, okay, so like, there's a piano recital. All right, so everything's probably clearly building to that. And I was like, okay, so maybe like we'll see him get better at piano. No, <laughs> no, not at all. No, no, not at all. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he's the only one that doesn't get better at piano <laughs> intentionally. Um, and uh, and so when the piano recital comes up, it's just this weird incident that happens. Yeah, it's it's just like a vehicle for another awkward Fred moment, really. Yeah. And it, it's like n- it plays no bigger part than any other awkward Fred moment in the whole film. Um, and and so one of the. <sighs> Everyone would have a normal life if Fred didn't have these weird delusions. And it's kind of sad because there's a line that Fred's mom gives where she's like, if I could afford therapy for you, Fred, I would send you to it. Yeah, like... (laughs) And it is legit, like, (laughs) the entire movie is, like, all Fred's fault. Oh, absolutely. All these terrible things happen to people just because Fred is just fucking insane. I mean, he suffers from debilitating hallucinations. I mean... That's, like, really what it comes down to. Like, he's mentally disturbed and needs help. Yeah. And and all these things happen as a result. I mean, I don't know, man. Like, uh, there's, like, there's so many moments in this movie and the first movie. But uh, I guess let's just start from the beginning. Um, (laughs) He fucking, uh, of course, it opens with him freaking out. Like Uh, He uh, says, my life is a horror movie. Yeah. Yeah, because his his um, his music teacher has been replaced by yeah. a guy named Mr. Devlin, who's just kind of an overall weirdo. Um, uh, he has some weird interests, as we find out. But uh, um, yeah, so you know, it starts out with uh, you know Fred talking to the audience as he does uh, many times throughout the movie. <laughs> uh, well, 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 <laughs> one of my favorite things is that. So he he's trying to uh, deconstruct the name Devlin and figure out what else that can mean, and so he ends up coming to the conclusion that it's it, that it's Devil N, um, and and he comes to that conclusion by moving only one letter, but that just that just means that he'd been spelling Devlin wrong anyway. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. De- Devlin is spelled Devil N. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, I was kind of confused, and then that's not even his final like realization um, about Devlin's name. Like he then later in the movie he like, oh, it's just Kevin, and what does he say? It's Devlin is just it's Devil Ke- Devil combined yeah, with Kevin. Kevin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like what the fuck? He does it like three times okay. in the movie trying to like deconstruct this name, but yeah. Um, I uh, love Kevin being back. Yeah, I'm I'm excited that that actor came back um uh, because um uh iCarly was replaced by a new actress. I don't even know her name. And yep. uh Judy isn't even in the movie and that's that was Pixie Lot. Um Yeah. They um, they, they, they they like they straight give up her... <laughs> Yeah, like they give her that Casablanca send away. And but it's even not even that, it's, it's, it's played Fred. Fred. Is, <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. Apparently she was supposed to be in the movie, but like her her management or whatever like said no. Like you will not be in any more Fred movies. Legit everyone didn't want to be in this movie. 
and, and I mean, it's also crazy because it's like this. So this movie was intended for a theatrical release, and it was intended for a 3D release. Oh, which really? Is why there's like oh, yeah. seven times in the movie where he's like, like in the beginning where he's handing the food over to the camera. Oh. Oh, like that's because it was intended for 3d glasses which is why this movie had a budget of like 30 million dollars <laughs> which is insane i mean <laughs> it's so fucking i think it stupid. i think it was released in the theaters in the uk because if you go on the wikipedia page it has a box office um yeah. gross for you and it did not oh, it, make its it, money it, back it did not do well in the uk <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, he does, you're right, he does hold up that sandwich in the beginning, that fucking gross ass. <laughs> I thought that was just to establish that he likes, well, I guess they established it in the first movie, that he likes to make weird food. Yeah. Uh, and he can make anything taste good, as we come to find oh my later in the god. movie. Oh my god. Which is like, that scene's might so be, fucking long. Might be my second favorite scene. Um, uh, but yeah, so he... He freaks out um, because his his music teacher has been replaced by Mr. Devlin. Well, it's a kind of like a weird intro, right? Because he he he's freaking out because he had a terrible day, and then it kind of is like a flashback scene almost, and then it, and then like the movie kind of catches up with the beginning. Um, because he remember he was like, "See, that's why I was so fucking scared because Mr. Yeah. Devlin's a weirdo." But that whole like that first sequence is really strange because he goes he goes to the school. And meets Mr. Devlin, and there's a whole sequence of him. And like this, this movie has the same structure. He like freaks out to the audience, goes to school, something weird happens. Then it shows him walking back home, and then something else like weird happens, and he gets scared, and then it does the same thing the next day. And then he like yeah. spies on Devlin at night. Um, but I thought the sequence coming home was real weird. He gets he gets freaked out because uh, Talia is following him, yeah. which. Which I really like this subplot. So Talia is Kevin's sister, um, Kevin who lives across the street from Fred, and Fred has no idea that Talia is Kevin's sister, yeah, and acts like she's never he's never seen her before. Um, uh, I I also loved uh, when he thought that she was a ghost. Yeah, and, no, and I just like all the other the, he has the vision of her as a ghost, and she's like yeah. a shopped a shopped till I dropped. Yeah, that was pretty funny. I just like the idea that he had no idea she existed. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty amazing. But, like, yeah, he gets freaked out and then, like, jumps in a baby pool and then, like, a baby, like, pisses in his face. <laughs> that that was what happened. Yeah. Okay. Like. Okay. Yeah, no, I was like, I was like, that's not okay. happening. So that implies that he jumped in a, in a baby pool with a naked toddler. Um, yeah. Which is kind of weird. And the baby yeah. pissed in his face. I I don't know. I thought it was funny, I guess. <laughs> I, I I laughed a lot during this movie. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I will oh, say yeah. that was really fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. I made a note of it because I was like, that's a little too far, Fred. Um, yeah. I also made a note of that because, yeah, he got peed on by a baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say the mom, uh, her spandex the entire movie, 10 out of 10. I thought she was fucking great in this movie she was great in this except movie. and it's really weird to say that uh because of how disjointed and how many flashbacks and weird things happen in this movie it is weird to also say that they gave all the other characters from the last movie more time and i enjoyed that about this film <laughs> oh yeah absolutely we, we get some some good quality time with the side characters um <laughs> except for we don't get much of derf which i'm disappointed by but whatever yeah we get one scene um but like literally like every scene where it's fred and his mom like she says some really like fucked up and funny shit to him just like (laughs) just implying that like she can't like you said she can't afford his help like therapy um and that he's just like fucking weird and she knows it yeah (laughs) like it's just really good shit um john cena uh, lives in the fridge (laughs) yeah so that's like uh, i mean we talk about you know some he hallucinates all the time and just like the first movie john cena's back as his yeah. as his pretend father, who like just like fucking lives in his fridge, and then like <laughs> shits, and that's like the only two things he does. <laughs> like it's like really fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> but it's kind of funny though. So yeah, John Cena's back. 
Uh, oh, the fucking WWE scene, man. Oh, my God. Yeah. The WWE scene is That's amazing. worth it. That's worth it to have John Cena in just for that. Oh, um, so good. So, yeah, so he he's like, uh, he realizes Devlin's a fucking weirdo. Um, uh, and then Flo from the, yeah. the Progressive commercials, that's yeah. Kevin's mom. <laughs> and she, like comes over and invites Fred and his mom for like it's like a welcoming party for Devlin. I yes. guess. Um and that scene's kind of funny because I think that's where Fred realizes that Talia's Kevin's sister. Yeah, at the party. Yeah, that was pretty fucking that was pretty funny. Um and we get to now, hear Oh, go ahead. I have a weird thing with this cuz this movie changed my life. I legit, like, you know the whole Mandela effect thing? Like, no, what is that? The Mandela effect is basically, like, the idea that it's, like, th- there's a universe where it's, like, people remember the Bernstein Bears as, like, the Bernstein Bears. Oh. And, and so it's basically the idea that it's, like... You know, uh, there's a universe where, like, in the 1980s, like, Nelson Mandela, like, died in prison, and there's a whole universe of people that remember that, and then we live in a secondary universe where, like, that never happened. And so, and so the concept is that it's, like, it's, like, social awareness of something that, that, that never happened, and, like, a multiverse theory combined with that. It's, it's just basically, like, people remembering shit wrong. And I always, like, when I heard about this, I was always just like, that's fucking stupid, like, I would never have that happen until I watched this goddamn movie and stupid Kevin keeps playing over and over again on the piano. Everybody have fun tonight. And Wang Chung tonight. And Wang Chung tonight. And I had no idea that that was actually a lyric in the song. And I just thought that that was once again Fred's writers having racist things involving Asian people because yeah. that's what happened in the last movie. <laughs> yeah, same. I was like, where is this and, coming from? And they keep fucking like this is. The second time Kevin plays a song, and he plays it two more times throughout the movie. Yeah, and and so like I just kept writing down. I was like, "What the fuck is Wang Chung? Why? <laughs> what is Wang Chunging? Why does he want people to Wang Chung tonight?" I was like, "What kind of fucking sick fucking joke is this?" And so then I looked it up, and I was like, "Oh, that's the band name that." wrote that song and then i look up the lyrics and i was like that's the lyrics to that song since when oh since forever (laughs) yeah i thought it was just like a racist thing and that that was yeah i thought it was just a racist (laughs) thing because the fred writers are racist and we know that i don't get why they keep playing the song it's not i I think it's not funny they probably <laughs> true <laughs> but it's probably one of those things where it's like they bought the rights to it and they're like all right we have to use yeah. it at least six times since we paid for the yeah. one time and it ties into the whole like plot that devlin's uh giving private lessons private music lessons because um, we do get to see an evolution of kevin getting really good playing yeah, that song. he gets real good <laughs> it's better and better <laughs> Um, <laughs> fucking Wang Chung tonight, dude. Um, but yeah, so that party happens. Like Talia, um, reveals herself as Kevin's sister, and of course Fred freaks out for the fiftieth time. Um, and then I guess later that night is when he like spies on uh, Devlin in a very like classic Fred way by putting on a camo poncho. Um, yeah, which is pretty fucking sick. And like. He sees Devlin, like, burying, I guess, the, well, we later find out is just kimchi, but, (laughs) which, again, is, like, another, like, I don't know, it wasn't a racist joke, but it's, like, an Asian-related joke. Um, Yeah. And and then he hallucinates that his old music teacher, I don't know her name, Mrs. Fenson or something, uh... He, she like appears inside of his pancake that part was so weird and i was like what the fuck is going on and they like and they establish early on that she can't hear uh so uh she can't hear what fred's saying and there's a little it's like some goofs there that happen um again it's like not very funny i don't know um <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, and then, like, I guess it goes the next day at school, and something I noticed from this scene is, like, kind of small, but I thought it was funny, like, it, it cuts to, um, one of Kevin's friends grabbing, like, the last private lesson slip off the bulletin board. Yeah. And, like, he, like, turns around the corner, and Kevin, like, gives him a high five, and he's like, yo, you got the last one, sick, or something. <laughs> You're gonna be so good at piano now. And I was like, they're not, like, tickets for private lessons. Like, those slips just have, like, the guy's phone number on it, and they're acting as if, like, he got the fucking golden ticket or something. Uh, He can print more. Yeah, I know. it's paper. (laughs) It's like, this is really fucking dumb. All right, so here's, here's the thing that I realized from the school scenes. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Building exterior shots. Did you notice anything weird? Um... No, I didn't. It it's a middle school, Zach. Oh, really? <laughs> Fred's in middle school. <laughs> what grade do you think he's in? <laughs> Hopefully, he's supposed to be thirteen because he's like twenty. Oh uh, yeah, everyone in this movie early, early the mid twenties. All the children. Everyone's so fucking old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of amazing. I didn't, I didn't even realize that, man. So he's he's 13. Like, he should be... That's fucking crazy. Or younger, I guess. <laughs> you say. He's 12. <laughs> oh, my God. A- 11-year-old Fred Figglehorn. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. Um. So... Um, that's a, that's a nice little, that's a little piece of trivia right there. Um, <laughs> God damn. um, so, uh, I think it's quickly after this, like Fred determines that Devlin's a vampire based off the yeah. evidence so far, um, <laughs> which is evidence. non-existent. Yeah. The, <laughs> he has no evidence besides I mean, he's weird. Okay. Okay, so he sees Devlin outside walking around wearing using a black umbrella. Yeah. Uh, he sees him bury what he assumes is a dead body, but it's just kimchi. Um, <laughs> and then he also uh, keeps telling uh, people to, you know, uh, come into his world. Yeah. And he thinks he's super weird. Yeah, I yeah I don't know, but he jumps to vampire for what it, for those for, for that evidence, but. Um, and that leads to like that f- stupid twilight scene, which was pretty, which is amazing. Was pretty fucking sick. I, I like that. <laughs> it was just, Fred's like Fred's face is superimposed on a jacked guy. Um, <laughs> and then like Kevin and Devlin and all like the other kids are like the fucking, the vampires. It was, yeah. it was pretty funny. It was so good. And then he transformed uh, into a dog. And then he wakes up from that dream to find out that his mom is going on a date with Devlin. Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, has one of my favorite lines in it, which is Devlin brings his mom some flowers. And the mom, once again, walks out in an amazing date outfit. And then she grabs the flowers and hands them to Fred and says, put these in something moist. (laughs) (laughs) She is a trash person. In this movie, in this one, she's kind of a trash person. Put them in something moist. Um, uh, that wording so dirty. Dude. That whole interaction, I thought when Devlin showed up to his house, was really funny. Like the way he was, he was treating him and stuff. Because he just, he just realized Devlin's a vampire, and he's like, he's like googling like signs that someone's a vampire, and he's like, oh, I'm safe. I don't have to invite him into my house. Yeah. And then immediately has to invite him in. Um, but so he calls up Bertha so they can follow his mom and and, um, and Devlin on, on their date. Um, and this leads to, like, the longest and best, <laughs> one of the best scenes in the movie. Um, they get, they, uh, <laughs> well, uh, Fred picks Bertha up in the in his fucking Fred mobile or whatever. <laughs> His bicycle with like a, a, with a, a s- cart to the side of it. Yeah, a I side fucking cart. love like so they they ride to the diner, um, and uh, and and Fred's like complaining I guess because it, it's really hard to pedal because because uh, because Bertha's in the sidecar, and then Bertha's like maybe it's because of this 
this fucking anchor, and it's just like a, a huge <laughs> ship anchor that he has in the sidecar, yeah. and he's like, yeah, I'm using that for parking because my kickstand broke, but yeah. it's it's a bike with a sidecar. <laughs> Again, yeah, a really really funny joke, dude. <laughs> really funny. It's uh, good writing. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> and so they go th- they go through the kitchen and like. The Fred just gets mistaken as the chef's like trainee, and yeah. is forced to cook meals all night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they get in some kind of argument, and like Fred, Fred, uh, Fred claims that he can make anything, anything taste good. Anything. Yeah. So the, of course, um, the one of the chefs takes off his like dirty sock, and he's yeah. like, "Make this taste good." So then, uh, what follows is like a fucking five minute montage of Easy. fred of fred uh well it's like cutting between fred making um the sock and and also <laughs> the bertha like waiting on on devlin and, uh, and yeah trying to eavesdrop and she's like taking yeah, taking and, orders from other people and then telling them to shut up so that she can hear devlin talk yeah and this is honestly where um the strongest evidence that uh devlin's a vampire comes into play yeah. Like, if they waited until this scene, and then Fred was like, oh my god, he's a vampire, that would have made way more sense than him just coming to that um, in, the, in the scene before. But whatever. So, yeah. he, like, orders a steak bloody, and he doesn't want garlic on his fries. or. Um, yeah. But, yeah. I just, I like the fact that Fred's, like, cooking a sock. He's, like, shoving it like, <laughs> full of, like, chocolate and sprinkles and, and fudge. And he, like, deep fries it. And the he fucking... like covers it in bacon at one point. <laughs> yeah. It just it's crazy. And the guy eats it. Like, like what the fuck, dude? And and then the end result of that is that he's just like, I mean, it tastes like a sock. And he's like, but <laughs> yeah. is it a good sock? And he's like, I mean, it's fine. And he's <laughs> yeah. like, oh yeah. 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 Oh man. Um, but yeah, that was unnecessarily long. But um but yeah, so now they have all the evidence that they need for Devlin. He's def- yeah, he's definitely a vampire now for ordering a steak rare. Um, yeah, and and uh, and so he he's not really too sure what to do, which is when of course he's saying "Oh my gamut" constantly. And oh my then gamut! His his, <laughs> his his oh my gamut. That's when his, <laughs> his his amazing father John Cena comes in and takes him to a wrestling match where they confront <laughs> Death and, and they confront again. Kevin. He's not physically going to a wrestling match. He's hallucinating that he's at a wrestling match with um, John Cena. Now, before the wrestling match happens, John Cena is making some great jokes uh, about uh, how he thinks that Devlin is an umpire, not a vampire. Hilarious. Yeah, that, that one didn't work for me. <laughs> just, 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 just real good. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, the WWE scene's pretty cool. The... Um, I enjoyed the big fat WWD, WWE logo for the whole oh, time. Oh yeah. Um, he's what is he fighting Devlin and uh and Kevin right? They're vampires. Yeah. yeah. Fred just in his fucking pajamas too. He just <laughs> it's so good. Do they end up winning that fight? I don't remember. Yeah, they do. They do. Okay, and then Fred just wakes up in his bed. Um, yeah. Um, does he uh does he spy on Devlin again that night or is it? I don't remember. He did, he spies on Devlin one more time. Yeah, so he spies on Devlin one more time, and that's where he basically comes to the conclusion that he has to end it, and he has to end it at the recital, um, which is where he goes comes to the conclusion that the only place that he can get garlic water is from an Asian restaurant. <laughs> Dude, this is my favorite scene and, in the whole and... movie. <laughs> I love it. Please, please tell me why. I, I mean, it's funny. The way they react to him, but I just enjoy, I enjoy that like these these two um, these two people um, that own this restaurant like react. I feel like they correctly respond to Fred. Like this is a mentally unstable person, and they're like actually terrified of him. Everyone else in the movie yeah. treats Fred like he's a normal like not that he's normal, but they're they they kind of downplay his episodes. And yeah. and these people are just like completely like petrified of Fred because he's yeah. asking for weird things off the menu and he's screaming. Um, 
But yeah, so he asks for uh, a, a garlic chicken, no chicken, no chicken. <laughs> yeah, and the lady like runs in the back to go talk to her husband, and like, <laughs> oh my god. And the fortune cookie reads like, what does it say? Like you're gonna see a vampire tonight or something? Yeah. <laughs> and Fred like, oh, this is also right after he steals that that street sign, and talks to oh her. Oh my god. So yeah. like, it's funny. I thought like the whole setup was funny because Fred um, steals the street sign and he kind of like swings it over his back so he has like this huge street sign like hanging off his back and he's like walking into this asian restaurant um asking for like for garlic sauce (laughs) um but uh but yeah like he he freaks out after that fortune cookie and then runs away as he does when something scares him um yeah uh and then he goes he he loads up on some like super soakers with filled with garlic sauce and goes to the recital. Uh, it's a master blaster. Oh, it's a master blaster and a water gun. They, they make a big point. That's a huge <laughs> they make, joke. They make a huge point of that. Um, because it's funny. Um, um, the so Fred has a dream about his confrontation with Devlin, uh, and that has some of the greatest green screen f- people flying uh, through yeah. the air that I've ever seen in a movie, yeah. which once again is clearly just designed for 3D, which <laughs> they did not have. That's really um, sad, man. I wish I experienced this, how, how, how Fred... Um, that- <laughs> Fred. Fred and the directors intended it to yeah, be seen. <laughs> if only we could have seen it on the big screen <laughs> with 3D glasses. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so in his dream, uh, you know, he takes out Kevin. Uh, and so then uh, he wakes up from his dream. He's outside of the, the school, and he goes in and just starts spraying everyone with garlic water oh, yeah. and yelling about how he's saving everyone, which if this were the real world, he would have been committed right then and there. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been like, a, that was a funny scene, your him child's just spraying insane. People. He's like, I, I like the part where he sprays Kevin and like in the face and Kevin's like, it burns. And then Fred's like, see, he is a vampire. <laughs> that part's so fucked. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, so he goes on this huge rampage, uh, spraying everyone with garlic sauce. And then then everyone hates him uh, um, because he just ruined their night. Um, yeah. And then Devlin invites him over for dinner to kind of make amends um yeah so fred decides um to expose devlin he's gonna live stream the whole night um so he gets over to devlin's house later on and um devlin's just fucking weird his house is weird he has weird like bug collections and just just a strange dude he's wearing like a like a weird like i don't even know like ceremonial robes or something big headdress yeah. um and devlin tells fred they have to dig up their dinner uh, out of the backyard and like so they start digging and and devlin reveals that they're digging up some kimchi for dinner and of course fred thinks kimchi is a as a woman <laughs> And like, oh, that was that was pretty Obviously, good. Obviously, so, some it's more Kim, whose last name <laughs> is G. Yeah, some more some more racial humor, and then uh, <sighs> he runs back inside, freaks out, um, and he somehow stumbles. He stumbles into um, like a I don't know what it is, like a secret kitchen or something, or like a secret secret slaughterhouse. There's a bunch of meat hanging everywhere. Yeah, Devlin calls it his his secret kitchen. A secret kitchen. It's really weird. Like it's there's like a a like a hidden a hidden door in a wall yeah. that he's he's like a Scooby Doo episode. It, 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 he, yeah, or like Dexter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so he. Uh, it's like some kill room shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So he goes back there and um, um, he like loses his shit and then uh. Devlin kind of calms them down, and they actually become like good friends in that scene. They realize yeah. they're both they're both weird outcasts, and I was like, oh, like a message for a movie. This is cool. Yeah. Um, 
but it's too late because Fred had already live streamed the whole night, and it got he dropped it in like a, a pot of boiling water. Or something. His phone, remember? Like yeah. that's why the like the live stream cut out. So everyone thought he was dead. Um so then the rest of the movie is Fred um trying to uh restore Devlin's reputation. And, and his so I, exactly yeah. like the last movie, yeah, there's exactly. another music montage. <laughs> It's it ends exactly like it's the same exact thing. Like he has there's his idea is that he's going to convince the whole school that he's a vampire. Yeah. So there's a montage sequence sequence with him and Bertha of them trying on like costumes and making fake blood, just like the last movie where Bertha and Fred were trying to make that video, the party video. Yeah. Same thing. Um, and it like works, I guess. Right. The whole school yeah. is like, yep. We believe Fred's a vampire now. Um, uh, and that's kind of it, really, for the movie. <laughs> they 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 trick the whole school. And then, like, right at the end, you realize... Or, or, when, wait. When Fred's accent, when, he, when he's a vampire... Oh, my God. He, he says, tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's tonight. like, I'm a vampire. <laughs> That part was really funny too. I, was I like, that is the strangest. Choice. I really like Fred as a character. Like him just being Fred, I think like there's a lot of humor there that works. He so this movie also has a significant pitch shift down from the last movie. Yes, yeah, and he is still like he freaks out a lot. But he is toned down a lot from the last movie, and it is much more tolerable. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think it's... It, he kind of perfected it in this movie. Yeah. You know? Um, it only took him uh, several years on YouTube and, and, and a feature-length <laughs> movie, but he finally perfected it. Um, they, they were probably, like, focus testing it for theaters, and they are like, this, we can't release this in its current yeah. state. Like, we have to tone this down. <laughs> Um, people were walking out. Um, uh, but yeah, so, um, every, well, I think Devlin move. he's like, I'm, I'm still going to move Fred. You're a good dude, but like, you know, I'm still going to move. This place sucks. Yeah. Um, and he, he takes Fred's mom out for, for dinner one last time. Yeah. And then you realize that, oh shit, Devlin doesn't have a reflection and yeah. he is a vampire. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Which makes sense, because the whole movie, I was like, what the hell happened to the original music teacher? Like, she straight up disappeared. Yeah. So, like, it, it implies that Devlin did kill her. Kill her. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, there's there's one more thing before that very... Because that's, that's the very last thing that happens in the movie. One last thing that happens is that... So, basically, uh, uh, Fred and Talia, the entire movie have some rockin' sexual chemistry. Eh. You know, she 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 eh. she wants to she wants to raw dog him real bad. Oh yeah. Um and then, you know, just like the last movie they're trying to ship uh Fred with Bertha real hard. And so that's why, you know, they have like the loving m- montage of them playing together and having fun. Mm-hmm. Um and there's that awkward scene where like Talia's just like, "So, uh, you're not his girlfriend, are you?" And she's like, "Well, I'm a girl." And I'm his friend, so... And then Talia's like, so that doesn't answer my fucking question. Um, <laughs> and then at the very end of the movie, uh, Talia, because the way that uh, Fred meets Talia is that she follows him to school because they take the exact same route. Um, it's Bertha and, and Fred walking to school and Talia's behind them. And Bertha goes, so, you know, are you and Talia going to like raw dog it? Like, is that what's going to happen now? And he was like, yeah, I don't really see a future there. I really need a woman that's going to challenge me. And then it does this weird like, thing like where a, it was like a freeze frame or something. It freeze frames on Bertha's reaction to that. <laughs> But then it switches perspectives to Fred and then unfreeze frames. Yeah. Uh, Why would anyone ever do that? I have no idea. I had no idea. I mean, like, it, this is like the same ending as the first movie, kind of. Like, they, like, you know, those two should be together. They're like best friends and they work well together. 
yet. Yeah. But I guess in this movie, Fred doesn't go off with another girl. He just shuts down the other girl who was after him. Um, yeah. But there's still no resolution there. Like, there, there is no... And we started dating or anything. It just kinda... and that's my thing. It's like, was that try? What, what was that weird freeze frame switch? You know, perspective thing supposed to be like? There's chemistry there, guys. Yeah, I think so. It's gonna happen. Well, it's gonna happen at camp in the third movie. Because <laughs> there is a third movie, and I believe that actress comes back to play Bertha. So good. And John Cena. Good. I'm not sure about Kevin though, but uh, he does. He does. Oh, thank God. Yeah, he's the best thank, part. Thank God. <laughs> Fucking Wang Chung. Wang Chung tonight. Um. Uh. Yeah, I love this movie. I absolutely love this movie. Why is the what's up with the title? Like, Night of the Living Fred. Like. Also, I don't think this movie was scary at all. Or, like, I know it was supposed to be scary, but it wasn't, ho- like, Halloween-themed. It wasn't... It, it was... It, the only... Th- it was he just thought, Fred. He, he thought, thought there was a vampire the whole time. Yeah, That's I know. That's what makes it Halloween-ish. I guess. You know? I guess so. Um, but even the... <laughs> like, Night of the Living Dead was about zombies. It had nothing to do yeah. with vampires. Yeah. Um, maybe it's, that's a, it's like maybe it's like it's another like, joke. I don't know. I don't get it's it. It's like a good pun, though. Yeah, yeah, it is, and that's why they picked it. I understand, but it's like yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So Devlin's a vampire. Um, there isn't a whole lot of trivia with this movie, Max. Um, I know. Unfortunately, um, and I already said one of them was that uh, Pixie Lot, like her her manager like refused to let her in this movie um, Le- legit no one wanted to be involved yeah that's very sad um yeah and like you said the film was originally intended to be shot with 3d cameras yeah <laughs> and and released uh in theaters and and it's ultimately neither became a reality as fred 2 ended up airing as a tv movie like the previous film yeah. um yeah, another, somebody else wrote, the title is a pun on the horror classic Night of the Living Dead, even though the central antagonist is a vampire instead of a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there, there are no goofs for this movie. I did spot one, though. Oh, which is um, So during, during the sequence where Fred is live streaming, like the entire uh, event at Mr. Devlin's house. Yeah. Okay. So he's pointing at all of the meat inside of the, inside of the, in the, of the room. And he's like, <laughs> oh my God, like, the, you know, these things. Oh my God, it's so scary. Oh my God. <laughs> and then the light goes on behind him and Devlin is like in his kimono outfit with his samurai sword. And he's pointing his camera forward, but everyone is going, Fred, 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 look out behind you. And Uh, not only could Fred not see what's happening behind him, but since he's pointing the camera forward, no one else could see what's happening behind him. That's a good goof, dude. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You gotta submit that. (sighs) I'm sure there was plenty of other goofs, but... I was just, I was just. Maybe fucking. the fact that he's in middle school. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe that he jumped in a, a pool with a naked child. Um, and got pissed off. And then we got <laughs> some weird stuff going on. Or, or, um, or, yeah, just the fact that he's in a pool with a naked child in general. <laughs> yeah. That's that's kind of a mess up on many people's parts. Yeah. Yeah, that's a goof though. Definitely a goof. <laughs> um. Uh, Shh, uh, be quiet, be quiet, okay? <laughs> okay! And he pisses in his face, and it's like, what is this scene? <laughs> oh, man. I love that Talia subplot, though. It's my shit. <laughs> I love when, when they, like, go back. Like, I was one of the scenes where um, he's walking home from school with Talia, and... Um, he like thanks her for walking him all the way home and she just is like she just looks at him like what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> like yeah <laughs> like i live right next to you um so next week we'll be doing the 1981 made for tv movie midnight offerings which is available 
in multiple versions in its entirety on YouTube. 